The iDatalink Maestro RR2 radio replacement interface features three 350 milliamp negative outputs that can be used to do many different things in your vehicle. This video will provide some examples and show you how to program them with the iDatalink Maestro MPO loader. One way the MPOs can be used is to convert a data message on the vehicle's computer network to an analog output. If you want to turn the output on when you step on the brake, switch your headlights on, or place the car in drive, the Maestro RR2 can easily do this. For example, if you are installing an aftermarket blind spot detection system, it will have connections for the right and left turn signal wires. However, these may be very difficult to locate in a modern vehicle, or they may be monitored by the vehicle's computer and be impossible to connect without causing an error message in the vehicle. The Maestro RR2 can convert the turn signal messages from the vehicle's data bus and generate an analog output so you can connect to the blind spot detection system. Another way you can use the MPOs is to turn on and off aftermarket accessories, such as interior or exterior lighting. This avoids the need to install a physical switch to do this. In this case, the MPOs can be switched on and off with the press of a steering wheel button. Some aftermarket radios even offer programmable touchscreen buttons with icons and text labels that can be customized to match the aftermarket device you are controlling. Prior to programming the MPOs, we must flash the Maestro RR2 using Weblink Desktop with the firmware for your vehicle. If you are planning to use one of the steering wheel buttons to activate a programmable output, you must assign it in Weblink during the steering wheel button setup, as shown here. Next, you need to download the MPO loader from one of three places. The MPO loader is a MS Windows-based utility that will configure the outputs. You can download the MPO loader at the end of Weblink flashing from the link at the bottom of the page. You can also find this same link on the first page of the install guide for your vehicle. It is also available at www.idatalinkmeister.com. From the home page, go to the support tab and click on the supports link. Here you will see a link for the Maestro RR2 programmable output guides and PC program. Once you open the link, you will see the executable file for the MPO loader as well as the programming guide. Download the MPO loader and the guide. Before launching the MPO loader, make sure to close the Weblink desktop application. Then, run the .exe file. You may need to click on Run Anyway if your computer gives you a security warning. Select the Weblink COM port from the drop-down menu and then click Connect. Follow the prompts and disconnect the Maestro RR2 from the USB cable and then reconnect it. Next, press the Connect button again. The MPO loader will read the configuration from the Maestro RR2 and display the loaded firmware on the right side of the screen. The MPO loader is divided into three sections, one for each output number and wire color. At the top of each section, there are buttons to select the type of output. The follower option is used to follow whatever trigger signal you select. We will illustrate the blind spot system example from earlier by selecting left turn signal as the trigger signal. The MPO will turn on when the left turn signal is activated and stay on until the left turn signal is turned off. As you can see, the follower is very useful in creating analog outputs from messages on your vehicle's data bus. You can also set independent turn on and turn off delays. As the name implies, setting a two second delay on and a three second delay off would result in the output turning on two seconds after the turn signal is activated and shutting off three seconds after the turn signal is switched off. This kind of output does not use a reset signal as it is designed to mimic the input signal exactly. You could also use a follower to introduce delays in turning on a DSP or amplifier to avoid pops and noises. The latch output type is used to create an output that will stay on until it is turned off by a secondary signal called a reset signal. If you wanted to turn something on when the vehicle is placed in drive and have it stay on until the door is open, you would use this output type. Select the drive gear as our trigger signal and select on as the polarity. If off were selected, the output would go active when the vehicle is taken out of drive, not placed into drive. Choose the door status as the reset signal and on as the polarity. Now the output will do what we described earlier, 
And as with the follower output type, a turn on and turn off delays can be configured. The toggle option is best described as a conventional switch. The same signal will simply reverse the state of the output, turning it off if it is on and on if it is off. Because of this behavior, it is not necessary to choose a reset signal. Here, we use a steering wheel button to control some aftermarket lighting that has been added to the vehicle. Prior to doing this, we need to be sure we programmed this output to a steering wheel button in WebLink. When the assigned steering wheel button is pressed for the first time, the output will turn on, and when we press it again, it will turn off. If you are installing a radio that supports accessory control buttons, you can choose them from the trigger signal list. Then, at the bottom, type the name of the button and then choose from one of the preset icons in the drop-down menu. As before, you can assign a delay if needed, but in this case, whatever delay you choose for the turn-on will automatically be used for turn-off as well. The module does not keep track of the on or off state. It simply reverses the state each time the steering wheel button is pressed. The custom option is the most flexible output type and can be used to create almost any waveform needed. Suppose we wanted to make a more complicated waveform to cause the third brake light of the vehicle to pulse quickly five times when the foot brake is pressed. First, we select a trigger and reset signal and whether to trigger it when the signal turns on or off. In this case, we want to trigger when the brake is pressed and reset when it is released. So we select foot brake for both the trigger and reset signals and choose on for the trigger and off for the reset. We could set a turn on delay, but since we want this to happen the moment the brake pedal is pressed, we will leave the delay on zero. Next, we set the on time for the output, which will be used with a relay to interrupt the feed to the third brake light. So it represents how long the brake light will be off. We want this to be short, so we change the units to milliseconds and select 250. Once we do this, the pulses box becomes active and is set to 1 by default. We have now configured the output to come on for the preset time each time the brake pedal is pressed and shut off after 250 milliseconds unless we release the foot brake sooner. Next, we need to specify the number of pulses we want. In this example, we will increase the number to 5. Because we now have more than one pulse, the time off box becomes active and we will need to tell the Maestro RR2 how much time we want in between pulses. The time off determines when the relay is not active, which reconnects the brake light so it is on. We want this to be fast as well, but visible, so we choose 350 and change the seconds to milliseconds. A delay off could be specified, but is not applicable in this example. Now let's illustrate what will happen in the vehicle. When I press the brake, the output triggers the relay and it results in the brake light pulsing five times. This will occur each time the brake pedal is pressed. In a real vehicle installation, the on and off times for the pulses would need to be fine-tuned to ensure the pulsing light is visible and works like we expect. Once you have programmed the outputs to the desired configuration, you are ready to send it to the Maestro RR2. Before pressing the send button, you must uncheck any outputs that are not being used. Once the configuration is done uploading, you can disconnect the Maestro RR2 and it is ready for installation. After you have installed it into the vehicle, you can test each output before connecting it to the device it will be controlling. Go into the OEM setup menu on your radio. Next, select Maestro module, MPO settings, then MPO testing. Each output and wire color will be listed as well as the buttons for both trigger on and trigger off and reset on and reset off. In the case of the follower example, only the trigger on and off will be available as there is no reset signal. When we press the trigger on, the MPO becomes active and the LED on the Maestro RR2 turns red simulating the left turn signal. When we press the trigger off, the MPO goes inactive and the LED will turn off. The second MPO is configured to a toggle and we assigned a steering wheel button as the trigger signal. Like in the follower example, there is no reset signal, so only trigger on and off are displayed. When we press the trigger on, the output turns on simulating the steering wheel button being pressed and it will stay on until we press the trigger off button. In our last third brake light example, we assign the foot brake as both the trigger and reset signal. 
If the reset signal was different than the trigger signal, the reset on and off options would be available, but because they are the same, only the trigger on and off is displayed. When we press the trigger on, the output goes active, simulating the brake being pressed. The output will turn on for 350 milliseconds after the trigger on is pressed, and then turns off for 250 milliseconds and repeats that sequence five times. The trigger off would only apply if we pressed it before the 250 milliseconds time frame after the trigger on is pressed. For more information on the Maestro RR2, please visit www.idatalinkmaestro.com.